Welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show, featuring Sony Televisions. Here's your host, Sean Hannum. Good morning and welcome to the AWE Breakfast Show. My name's Sean Hannum and I'm a freelance journalist and I've been specialising in technology, retail and music, writing about that for more than 20 years. And I'm your host for this morning's AWE Breakfast Show session at EI Live Interactive. So as part of this virtual weekend event for the home tech sector, I'm talking to industry representatives from brands including Sony, Ring, URC, Epson, Denon, Marantz, Deleted Technology from Sound United, LG, and also, of course, AWE. We'll be holding an interactive Q&A session with our guests towards the end of this show, so there'll be the chance for you, the viewers or listeners, to send in your questions for the panel during the program. So to do this, you have to maximise your computer screen, go to the viewers control panel on the webinar platform where you can submit the questions during the show, and then we'll discuss them with the panel towards the end of the session. Now, for this morning's half an hour session, delighted to say I'm joined by representatives from Sony's TV department and AWE. We'll be talking about some of the latest Sony TVs and finding out what makes them attractive for installers and their customers. We'll also look at 8K, highlight some of the benefits of the Android TV platform and identify a few current trends in the TV market. So now I'd like to introduce my guests. Firstly, from Sony, we have Nick Roos, who is head of training and brand activation and Ken Robinson, Area Business Manager, Sony CE Specialist, but he's got a large business card. We're also joined by AE's Technical Sales Manager, Tilak Rana. So, morning, guys. Morning. morning. How are we all doing? Very well, thank you. Beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. You've won the prize for the best backdrop this morning, I think, just in case there was, there was a, we were under any illusion who you worked for. I think the, you're spot on with the brand. Thank you very much, uh, yeah, Tilak, you're second uh, in, in the uh, branding backdrop prize and Nick I think you may have to get the uh, Ken gets the booby prize I think sadly sorry Ken but um cool okay well so let's ask where you're joining us from Nick you're at Sony HQ in Weybridge today aren't you yeah correct yeah I just came in because ultimately I wanted to have the nice backdrop so I mean I don't think, don't think most people will have a setup like this in the as a spare room for a for a video broadcast like this no it looks cool and can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been at uh, Sony Nick Yes, I actually have been with Sony for quite some time. Uh, it's coming up to must be uh, oh, almost 15 years now. Actually, I um, started off a long, long time ago in the imaging division. So starting off with cameras, then moved over to the laptops, and then I moved over to Sony Europe to do their training for for the laptops um, until about 2014. <laughs> then moved to the UK and did the TV business there. And from there, it became more than just TV training, but also taking care of all the other bits and pieces, and then gradually started working with AWE, doing uh, bespoke sessions for their customer base. Because ultimately, of course, kind of this audience has very, very different needs compared to your regular customer that walks into a normal retail store. So focusing more on the on the technical side of things and kind of all the bits and pieces that make our TVs better suited for for the for the custom install business. So right. yeah, no, it's been a been a fantastic ride, and of course, here we are. Yeah, we're going to talk more about the, uh, the features in a minute. Um, Ken, how long have you been at Sony and where are you joining us from this morning? Well, I'm joining you from Carshall Beaches, which is near Sutton in, in uh, Surrey. Um, and I've been with, I'm a new, virtual newbie to Sony. I've only been here 12 years, unlike Nick. Right. Um, and started with them uh, doing EV, a, 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 a vehicle, a, a electronic vehicle. And, um, and car audio products. Did that for about two years and then moved across to the brown goods on the independent specialist side. Uh, I managed the southern area for the, of the UK and um, that, that sort of specialist encompasses things like um, uh, ins installation companies, which is where the association with AWE comes in at the moment. So, yeah. Great. And Tilak, about yourself, how long have you been in the industry and with AWE? Um, I've, I've been in the industry for probably about 10 years now. I've uh, been with AWE for about five um, and it's been fantastic. Um, I'm actually here at a AWHQ at the moment. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just it's brilliant. <laughs> huh, it's great. You found your ideal job. Yes, right, now definitely. we're here to talk about, in case anyone didn't know, we're here to talk about TVs. There's a bit of a clue on the wall behind Till out there. Um, so <laughs> let's go over to Nick first. So can you talk us through some of the highlights in the current Sony TV range and tell us why these models will appeal to the kind of integration market and also to consumers as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we've got a range of different TVs in basically every screen size that will fit any need for, for any customer. So be it a small screen size like a 43 or 49 inch, all the way up to massive 75, 85 inch screens and anything in between as well. Um, 
Most of them also running the Android TV platform. I think most of the custom installers that have been working with Sony for a while now already know the benefits of that, and I'm sure we'll cover that a little bit later as well. But it integrates into all your home control systems, for example. It has all the services and all the apps that you need. Uh, but we have screens that will fit any budget as well. So if you're looking for a super high-end installation, we've got our 8K TVs. We have a range of OLED TVs. Uh, from small screen sizes again to big screen sizes. We have a range of full array premium LED LCD TVs and a range of standard LED TVs as well. So whatever type of TV you're looking for, we'll have it available. And the beauty is that they all run the same software. So it doesn't matter if you go for a entry level one or a flagship one, they all perform in the same way. Um, in terms of how you set them up, how you integrate them in your systems as well. Of course, picture quality, the higher up you go, the better it gets. So you go from a normal edge-lit TV up to a full array TV where you've got local dimming, better black levels, better contrast, better processes higher up as well. And if you go even higher up towards the OLED range, of course, you've got the pixel uh, pixel level control. So you've got that, that perfect black level, you've got better viewing angles. Um, and at the top end, of course, 8K with a super high resolution uh, and all of them featuring upscaling as well, because in the end, we know that not everyone is watching pristine content, not everyone is looking at 4K content or 8K content. So you need your TV to be able to upscale your standard def, your normal high definition content, your streaming content up to the best capabilities. And all of our TVs have this upscaler built in. Um, of course, I mean, hopefully you can see on this chart, the higher up you go, the more features you, you get. And of course, models like the XH95 on the LED side of things, the flagship 4K model. I mean, this has all the bells and whistles that you would need on an LED. Um, and then the AG9 does all the bells and whistles on the OLED side of things. And then of course, the ZH8 being our flagship 8K TV, which takes all of those elements, then increases the resolution up to an 8K resolution. I know we're going to talk about some of the benefits of the Android TV platform in a minute, but can you tell us uh, briefly some of the proprietary Sony tech that makes these kind of TVs stand out from the competition? Yeah, definitely. So I believe from a picture quality point of view, I think it's definitely the, the upscaler technology that we have. I mean, Sony is uh, is in the unique position that we are not just selling TVs, but we also make the content. Uh, so content that you watch on, on, on streaming services, but also on live TV. We make the cameras that are being used in the broadcast industry. I mean, using one right now, you can see one behind me. Uh, we do everything from content creation, hardware, the acquisition, the editing, the distribution, all the way down to the screen that, that you're watching or could, could be watching this on right now as well. And all of that knowledge is then baked into these processes. So whenever one of our TVs gets an input signal from any source, it looks at the individual content on that screen and then analyzes the, the different elements and then applies the, the right level of upscaling from a detail point of view, from a color point of view, to ensure you end up with a really nice, realistic looking image. I um, mean, even if the content is a little bit lower resolution. So this example for here where we can see the input signal, we can recognize those elements and then compare that against this database of reference images that we have on the inside using artificial intelligence to, to detect what's on the screen and then to upscale it to the best of its capabilities. It won't be able to perform pure magic, so your VHS tapes won't look like pristine AK content, obviously, but it's a... a, a magic. It, 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 it magic won't uh, but it will be able to take your normal uh, 1080p Blu-rays, for example, and make them look like 4K content. If you put that side by side, it's very, very difficult to tell the difference. Or take your 4K you content... You picked up quite a few awards for these TVs as well, haven't you? You won a um, what Hi-Fi award recently for one of your um, flagship TVs. Yes, yeah. So we've won quite a lot of five-star Wi-Fi awards for most of our products, um, and also product of the year as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so from an OLED point of view, again, we've got product of the year there, which is really, really good. Um, we've got really the, one of the the best TVs with the A8 five-star, but on the A9, the 48-inch version, that's product of the year. It's it's basically they said it's the best 48 uh, 48 or 49-inch screen that you can buy. So if you're looking for a smaller screen with the best possible picture quality and all the benefits of Android that we'll cover later, I think the A9 is definitely the one to go for. Um, and yeah. Again, it's, it's in a master series as well, so it's, it is a flagship television after all. But let's talk about Android TV now. It seems a good chance to mention it. Um, mm -hmm. So what are the advantages of the Android TV platform over a kind of proprietary system? So Android TV, of course, it's made by Google. Um, I think everyone knows Google. So it's a massive software development company that keeps on improving and, and adding features. Uh, so we started off a few years ago and we started adding more and more features. So Android TV as a whole, it has everything that you would want from a smart platform. So it has all the apps that you would want already out of the box. So we have all the catch-up services, for example, built in, um, and not just the kind of UK catch-up services, but also streaming services. I mean, of course, Netflix, YouTube, but also things like BT Sport, Now TV, Disney Plus, it's all there. Um, so whatever content you want, you can already get it from the software on the TV. But if whatever you're looking for isn't directly already pre-installed, you can then go into the App Store and then get whatever app you want as well. So we have over 5,000 apps. So that's the official line. In practice, we're looking at close to 10,000 apps already um, compared to any other platform on the market that is a 
it's a massive, massive difference. You're looking at between 50 to 100 on most other manufacturers versus close to, to, to close to 10,000 for a Sony. So whatever you want, chances are it's going to be available. And on top of that, we also have Chromecast built in, which supports 4K, and we have AirPlay built in as well. So it doesn't matter if you use an iPhone or if you use an Android device, you can get your content from your mobile devices straight onto the screen within the best possible picture quality. 10,000 um, so of course. Yeah. Hmm, should, get lockdown. should get through lockdown, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah, def definitely. I mean, whatever <laughs> content you want to watch, Friday. you can get it. You can get it on the screen. Yeah, and you've got more apps and updates on the way, haven't you? I know there's stuff uh, planned further down the line. Can you tell us anything about what's coming up? Yeah, so of course, I mean, we already have more apps than any other system on, on the market, but there was one that was kind of missing from, from our platform, which is Apple TV, um, and that mm -hmm. will be covered to all of our TVs as well, all, all, the, all, the, all the Android TVs. So right. again, make it good that we've got the latest, latest and greatest. And because it's Android, we can update our TVs to add those services as well, unlike some other uh, platforms out there where basically it is what it is, and then once an app becomes available, you can't really add it on top. With Android TV, you have the option to update the software and then add more and more as, as we go along. And more services are being added, especially, of course, now that streaming is the way forward. I would imagine in the future, more and more services are going to be, be created, and those will be available to, to add to Android TV. And if it's not possible to add it to the software, if they don't have an app, at least you can Chromecast it or AirPlay it to your TV. So there's always a way to get your content on the big screen. Um, you touched on um, 8K earlier. Let's talk about that now. So as we all know, there's still very little... Um, 8K content or native 8K content out there, when can we expect to see more? And do you think the lack of native 8K content is pu putting people off buying 8K models or are they kind of future proofing themselves by investing in the latest tech? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a future proof technology. I think everyone, of course, was waiting for 2020 with the Olympics to be the first like real big 8K showcase. Um, of course, with the current situation, that was uh, completely, uh, completely destroyed. But luckily, if you're in the UK today, if you did a pre-order for your PlayStation 5, that will be the, be delivered. And that supports 8K gaming, for example. Um, and there will be more 8K broadcasts co coming as well. So there have they've already been quite a lot of testing with the BBC and NHK. Um, so native 8K is coming and it's already there to, to a certain degree. Uh, but don't forget, of course, the upscaling side of things as well. So if you watch your normal 4K content, so if you watch a football match in 4K, for example, our 8K TVs can upscale that. And if you take a, let's say, 75-inch or 85-inch 4K TV and an 8K TV, put them side by side with the same content, the 8K TV with its upscaling will make it look better. And especially the minute you go towards these bigger screen sizes, that that difference in resolution becomes really, really obvious. I think that's really important. Example, you with, the, you know, with, with the gaming yeah. side of things, I mean, this is, of course, from a Sony point of view, is incredibly important as well because ultimately we yeah. make the TVs, but we also make the PlayStation. Um, and again, of course, that will be a big driving force behind this as well. Yeah, I think there's a big gaming thing happening this week, isn't there? <laughs> yes, yeah. My, my pre order is coming in today as well, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> okay, mine's here, but I shouldn't really tell anyone that. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that's really important for the home integration market is the ability of, of TVs to connect to third party control systems. And I guess. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how Sony's TVs can interact with other control systems that are on the market? Yeah, yeah. So I believe from from a Sony's point of view, we try to make it as easy as possible. So we we support basically all all IP control systems that that you want to use. I'm sure Tele can cover some of the, some of their their specific model versions as well. Um, but all the Android TVs have have full support for basically whatever you, is your preferred control system. I um, mean, even the non-Android versions have some, some basic IP control functionality as well. Um, and it's not just the TVs; it's the AVRs, it's the it's the Blu-ray players. It's basically all network devices that we do in the home entertainment side of things support some form of, of control uh, but with android tv doesn't matter if you go for an entry level or a flagship they all fit in to do your system the way you want it to do be it very very basic just switching it on and off and having then everything coming from hdmi distribution or if you want something a little bit more advanced where it ties into like full-on scene control or a uh, nice 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 little system you walk into the house motion sensor turns on the tv plays a welcome message and the lights dim automatically whatever you want to do it's going to be possible with an android tv do you think more people are getting used to having the smart TV as part of their kind of home e ecosystem? In the past, I mean, when smart TVs first launched, people were kind of used to streaming or accessing apps on it. Um, more basic functionality, but now it's part of an ecosystem. Is that a growing trend that you're seeing people making it interact with their lighting and their speakers, et cetera? I think so. I mean, of course, maybe as well. I think more and more people have more smart devices. Uh, I think obviously because they're becoming a bit more affordable, makes it also more accessible for more people in the market. Um, and it doesn't always have to be over the top with, with shutters and like have a full home automation. Uh, for some people, just having the lights and, and door locks, for example, or smart plugs is, is, 
that as, as an entry point yeah. is where they are. Um, and with Google Assistant built into our televisions, that makes it super easy to start off with a very basic setup and then gradually transition into a more advanced system where you can control it all from tablets on the wall, with motion sensors or whatever system you kind of you, you want to design. Um, it's all possible with Android TV, from basic consumer stuff all the way to high-end installations. Yeah, I think uh, the most important thing to be... Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think the most important uh, thing that people are kind of thinking about at the moment is convenience um so that they just want their everyday lives to be a lot easier which is where these control systems um come in um you walk in you push a button your favorite things are already playing on the tv or you've got music playing in the um kitchen etc um that that's all it's about just convenience <laughs> right i'm going to bring you in now ken and um, one of the important things for retailers and for consumers obviously and in integrators is the after sales support side so can you sort of tell us a little bit about uh, the support that sony provides things like warranties that are really important for the consumer and the dealer yeah well i mean certainly from uh, th from from sort of our xh81 tvs upwards all, all of our tvs are covered with a five-year warranty and the beauty of our five-year warranty is that when it leaves our warehouses we automatically activate it um, and it goes into the into our retailers um, and, and the likes of, of AWE. Um, when it goes into the consumer's house, obviously there's a there's a bill attached to that, and um, we will honour that. Uh, so if it's say been in three months in the warehouse, uh, it, we actually extend it by three three months um, if, if there should be need to be a claim. But it means that the retailer, the the, the distributor. Uh, don't need to do anything. The the um, consumer doesn't actually need to do anything to activate it. There's no forms to fill in and send off. The actual warranty is with the TV. If the TV were to go to a son, daughter, or to go on to another person, it, because the warranty is with the TV, it's still covered, and it's very easy just to identify that if you should require any assistance uh, by contacting uh, you know you know our system, our service system. Um, and they'll pick it up from there. So it's actually working really well. And I think it's quite hassle free for, for people that are installing uh, TVs. Right. And, and that's a real bonus for us. Yeah. One of the other things we should touch on is, is training, really, and support um, through Sony, but also AWA. Tilak, I'm going to ask you uh, to comment on this, really. Uh, so, what kind of training is available for, for guys who, you know, customers who want to sell and install these, uh, these Sony TVs via AWA? Well, um, well tra training and support is really important uh, for both us and Sony. Um, and uh, the thing is as well that Nick, Nick's um, uh, and, and Ken uh, are pretty great with organising this as well. So we we actually have dedicated launch events and training, um, whether it's uh, online or um, at our our um, headquarters or at Sony Weybridge as well. Um, it's it's the, the the relationship that we've got with Sony is more of a partnership. Um, so we get the same level of support as retailers do. Um, so it's it's not really uh, people having an account with AWE or um, having a relationship with AWE. They've also got that same relationship with Sony as well, which I think is quite important. Um, so yeah, it just it, it makes things a lot easier. Um, training events and um, support um, is fantastic all the time. <laughs> We've talked a lot about the products. I'd like to kind of um, widen things out a bit, maybe talk a bit about some of the kind of trends in TV. Uh, we've talked a lot about picture quality as well. Um, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about the audio side of, of the of TV market at the moment? Because that's been a kind of, uh, sometimes gets forgotten about when everyone talks about picture quality, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I believe whenever someone is considering a TV, the first thing foremost is always going to be picture quality because that's why they buy a screen. Uh, but also the trend of TVs is that they're getting slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. So sound quality as a whole has suffered quite a lot. Um, of course, we try to improve it as much as we can. Um, so on our LED TV models, we have more speakers now, just as along the bottom, but also along the top and, and the sides of the TVs. But for OLED TVs, we do something quite special, which is something that nobody else does. Uh, we call that acoustic surface. It's, that's where we use actuators to vibrate the full screen of the OLED panel to generate sound, which means that you've got much, much better sound coming from directly from the TV. And on our high-end models, we also have the center channel mode where the TV itself can actually be integrated into a home entertainment setup. So if you just take the speaker wire from whatever AVR you might be using, plug it into the into the television and it just accepts the speaker input signal. So it's all being driven by your amplifier. Um, of course, that means that you don't need that additional center speaker somewhere along the bottom of the screen or above the, or above the screen, um, which means that of course, and the sound is whenever someone is talking, on uh, in a video for example you can see them but you can hear them from exactly the same spot so it's much more immersive it's very similar uh, to the setup that you would have either in a cinema or if you if you use a projector with a screen with an acoustically transparent screen with a speaker behind it it's very difficult to do that with a tv 
but with our radar OLED screens on the on the high end side of things, you can actually do that, which is quite a, quite a fantastic setup. Okay, I think um, that's actually exactly what Telek has behind him right now. So it's a really really cool setup. <laughs> yeah. Could, could you uh, have a device how it is set up as well? So this is the TV of the center channel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah coincidence that's, that's on the wall. Anyone would think we planned it like that, wouldn't they? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's been an extraordinary year for everyone. Um, let's talk a bit about the kind of how COVID has affected the, the kind of TV market. What effect have you seen? Maybe, Ken, can you talk a bit about how what effect it's had on business and maybe on, on retail? Yes, certainly. Um, so so uh, coming into lockdown, I mean, obviously, March, when it, when, when it sort of started, I don't think anybody anticipated the impact of it and, and the length of time that it would take. Um, certainly as far as we as a company are concerned and as an industry we have targets uh, where we're expecting to, 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 to achieve a certain level of, of business. Um, so that was depleted, although I have to say that from our point of view uh, it, was, it was actually a lot better than we'd anticipated it would be. Um, and, uh, you know, it kind of gradually started to creep back up a little bit. Uh, um, and, and also we found that there was a much, much higher incidence and people started to develop their online activities. Um, and, and certainly for my area, which is the independence, uh, it became much, much more prevalent and, and people got their act together, you know, very quickly. So, so the impact of that wasn't quite so bad. Having said that, coming out of lockdown, um, sort of mid-June, um, the business just went mad. Uh, you know, we, we'd already built up a buffer of, of TVs that we'd expected to be able to deliver into the market. We did that and some, um, and it's just, it's carried on going. I mean, it, it hasn't plateaued. The actual, the, the growth in the business has, has been phenomenal. And, and we're finding ourselves now in a position where we've actually achieved the kind of levels of business that we were expected to uh, um, to this date. Uh, so we've caught up and, 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 and even exceeded those, those, um, those, those sort of targets. So it's going very well. And the biggest problem we've currently got really is actually managing to supply the demand. Um, and I think that's probably down to the fact that the consumers are locked down. They are seeing that there's a benefit to having TV. That that applies to whether it be uh, retailers or certainly from your point of view, uh, from from installers. I think people have started to see the the importance of of having good home entertainment. And you know, for for that reason, our our industry is probably benefiting for it at the moment, which is which is a great thing. You know, there's so many other people struggling in yeah. other industries. Um. Nick, I want to sort of look, look ahead a bit. I know you guys can't always tell us what's on the roadmap, but uh, it's top secret. You'd have to kill me if I found out. But where do you see the kind of TV market heading in the future? We've talked a lot, obviously a lot about technology 8K today, also about how people are investing in their homes. What What's kind of on the horizon? Is it a, is it a, a bright future, if you pardon the pun, for, uh, for the TV market? Well, I think as a whole, I mean, the trend is bigger screens. Uh, I mean, of course, yeah. kind of depending on whatever like space limitation people might have, but overall, I think a lot of people want the big screen experience. So I guess the, the trend of especially across the industry will be towards bigger screens just to get the more immersive experience. Uh, a few years ago, the kind of the average screen size was maybe around a 40 to 43 inch. Uh, now you're already looking at 55 to 65 inches being quite standard. And I think a lot of people are now looking at the 65 inch screen and going, yeah, 75 will probably fit as well. And some people might take it even further to go to 85 or maybe even beyond that as well uh, until you get into a like, pre projector territory, of course. Uh, but big screens is definitely the way forward. And of course, the smart side of things is incredibly important as well. So I don't think anyone would want a non-smart television nowadays anymore because they want it from a regular consumer point of view to do everything without hassle. And from a custom installer point of view, you want it to integrate into whatever you're building instead of having to rely on an external box that kind of sits behind it. Um, mm -hmm. So like Apple TV being integrated now, for example, for us going forward, it's going to be much, much easier. You don't need that additional box somewhere hidden behind the TV or in the wall or somewhere in your system. So trying to simplify it for both consumers and for the custom install business. That's a very convincing argument. You can come around and tell my wife that if you like, and then she might um, <laughs> get a bigger tell. It's brilliant. I'll say Nick said it. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks great with his sofa as well. Yeah. Um, it could be very so convincing, let's, um, I assure you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things um, um, I want to look at now is we've had a kind of a lot of heavy industry debate on TV and we're talking about tech, but let's talk about something a bit lighter. So we've been talking about TVs for the last almost half an hour. I'm going to ask you now, guys, quickly, tell me what's the best thing you've seen on TV recently? Go on. Let's start with you, Tilak. Go on. <laughs> well, basically, uh, it's, it's a bit awkward because I've completed Netflix like three times now. <laughs> I've seen is probably the right, the right question. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually watching Stranger Things again, um, which is quite cool. Okay, even it's got even Stranger the second time round, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Ken? What's, what's been the, 
What have you been watching on Sony? So I've been obviously much the same as Tilak. I've been watching an awful lot of streaming TV, and I think with the advent yeah. of things like Netflix, Prime TV, uh, you know, um, um, uh, Disney, um, it's yeah. just been really good. So, so for me, I've, I've been watching things like Mandalorian, which I've been waiting weekly for the new new series or episodes to come out, um, yeah. and also uh, something on the BBC because I think they still do good stuff. I, I watched Roadkill. Yeah. Which was uh, Hugh Laurie, yeah. which was uh, which was a sort of a, uh, a political drama, and my, both my wife and I really enjoyed it. So it's, there's some really good stuff on, and, and I think with streaming, it just gives you that much more opportunity to watch kind of what you want rather than be mm. limited to what you want. So, and and that's kind of evolving and developing. So it's been really great. Yeah, and what about yourself, Nick? What's been um, what's been your choice of TV for lockdown? Yes, very, very similar to, to the rest as well. So it's, it's a mixture, of course, a little bit of live TV. I mean, watching someone drop a cake live on Bake Off is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but then yeah, going yeah. back to Netflix to watch whatever you want to watch at that point in time. Um, I'm quite into my sci-fi. So, of course, things like Mandalorian on Disney has been absolutely fantastic. But also watching some older shows that maybe before I didn't really have time to watch. Uh, but there's a show on Netflix called Humans, for example, which is like artificial intelligence and robots, how they fit in kind of in daily life. It's an older show, but it's still absolutely fantastic. And of course, even though it's a bit older, it's maybe not in 4K, but it still looks fantastic on the screen. Yeah, I'm very jealous. I've got um, two young boys. I've got twin boys. They're only 20 months. And uh, I've had all this time to do stuff like during lockdown. But because I'm on childcare a lot, I'm not being able to watch any telly at all. I must be the only person who hasn't binged on any box sets during lockdown. I'm just, uh, but, uh, not maybe I'll make you and the bills over yeah 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 um uh, that's great yeah so and, um let's see if we've got any questions now from uh, from our viewers and this is going to go over to our roving reporter james drummy awe uh to see what questions the uh listeners have sent in hi james you're hi. uh you're you're roving from around epsom this morning aren't you yeah still still hiding in epsom um yeah we've had a couple of comments in um someone saying here that the uh center channel um works incredibly well um so that's uh, getting an endorsement here um i'm agreeing with ken about roadkill i think I've, i was just watching that it's absolutely fantastic um i've got one question here from tom butler of butler harwell he's after uh cad drawings specifically the uh, dwg files for all of the televisions. Nick, do you want to cover that or should um, I? Yeah, so the CAD drawings are something that we've been supplying for, for quite a few years now. Um, so we have them available for every single model and every single screen size. Uh, we don't have them in the full layered version, uh, but you will have the full overview of every single dimension, both from the front, from the side, with the legs, without the legs, for wall mounting. All of those are available. And I think they're on the on the AWE dealer platform for uh, to download. And if something is missing from there, just get in touch and we'll be able to get that out to you. Great. Any more questions, James? Anything? Um, yeah, uh, there's um, one here. I think it's touching on um, what we were talking about on Monday about uh, Ring, the Ring app, and how that works. So yeah. I'm not sure if Ring currently has a, a full-on Android TV application. I know Nest had uh, has one uh, obviously at some point. Uh, basically, how that will work is like you can open it up and, of course, then monitor whoever it is by your front door. Um, I suppose in, in in the case of of Ring, I mean, I have to look into it, but I would imagine you push someone pushes the the, the door, doorbell, you get a notification on the Android TV, you can click on it, and that will make it full screen. So it should behave very very similar to what it does on a mobile phone, for example. Um, I don't, it, it shouldn't over, overtake your screen immediately. It should always be with a little pop up, very similar to what you get if you plug in a USB stick, for example. It will ask you, do you want to open it or not? Because it's going to be a little bit distracting, of course. Maybe you want to ignore whoever's by the front door and keep on watching TV. <laughs> yeah that could be good <laughs> james anything else from the, the viewers um that's it for now great and well thanks guys um we're coming up towards the end of the session i guess we've talked a lot about um tv and lockdown i'm just gonna ask before we uh, end today how are you guys looking to um get out of lockdown what are you looking to do when, when you can't watch tv and you've got to get out of the house when you know you can't just shut the door when the ring app is on um how are you going to um be spending your time um, when you actually leave the house post lockdown um, let's ask you first, um, Ken. Uh, well, I'm really looking forward to going to the pub with my mates. Uh, also <laughs> going out. <laughs> Stormer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably fairly consistent with everybody. But uh, also, it'd be good to have meals with friends. And for me, it's uh, it's the uh, trials and tribulations of being a Palace fan, both home and away. So I should be watching <laughs> games, you know, at Sellers Park and, and taking the odd, odd occasion, we'll go away with my friends to uh, to have a boys' weekend away. So uh, that's How something I'm really busy. Nick, how are you going to be yeah. spending your uh, post-lockdown? 
yeah, I mean, it's going to be similar to that, but also I'm really looking forward to be able to travel again and go out and actually see things that right now you just it's impossible to go out and kind of kind of fly abroad and actually look at yeah. whatever you want to go. It's just impossible right now. So really looking forward to be able to do that again. Maybe catch a little bit of sunshine now and again, which would be a, would be a nice change versus the grayness that we have right now. And Tilak, what about yourself? Um, oh, definitely traveling. I, I, I'd like to catch a lot of sun. <laughs> um, but yeah, just spending more time with people, going out um, to the pub, uh, restaurants, just yeah, interacting <laughs> and not <on> screen. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys. We've come to the end of the session today on um, Sony TV. So before we go into standby mode, I'd like to thank my guests, Nick and Ken from Sony, Tilak from AWE. And don't forget to listen to the rest of the AWE Breakfast Shows from EI Live Interactive this week. Or you can access the ones from earlier in the week via catch up. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And um, sadly, we can't all go down the pub now. But um, thanks and enjoy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching the AWE Breakfast Show.